What's up, everybody? My name is Steve Hoffa, and this is the Standing Still Podcast. Super stoked that you're here. Ivory Kellogg on today's episode, and I couldn't be more excited. Love this person. She's such a sweetheart, as you guys will see. Talked about holistic health and what that means, because I definitely didn't know what it means. I literally had to Google it before she came on, but dieting and the whole thing, and she really knew a lot. She really knows her stuff. You could tell she's definitely passionate about it. We talked about her getting in, being an actress, which is a ton of work not only you know boots on the ground and actually going to interviews and doing the work but also just you are constantly getting rejected all the time and that is a lot of work to kind of fend off of those demons as you guys will hear and see we talked about groundlings and doing improv and how cool and how much fun that looks and hopefully one day i get to be a part of that school but anyways a great conversation i hope you guys enjoy it ivory kellogg on the standing still podcast Are you ready? You ready for the show? So excited but then nervous all at the same time. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, Steven. We got this couple professionals over here. Let's do it. I'm ready. One of us for certainly is, and I think I'm looking at her. But uh, here we go. Standing Still Podcast. My name is Steve Hoffa. Super stoked that you're here. Glad you're with me. I got a really fun show. Uh, Ivory Kellogg. How's it going? Hi. It's good. How are you? Are you hanging in there? Oh, yeah. I'm hanging in there. You're just a little bundle of fun while <laughs> I was setting up cameras. and Yeah. Getting ready? Getting all the stuff going. Okay, so Ivory's my cousin. She's been on the show a long time ago, but she's back on. She's been doing a lot. Yes. I'm excited to hear about it. Thank you, Stephen. When I think about you, I think holistic health, <laughs> and I think actress. <laughs> yes. Those are your two bugaboos, right? My bugaboo, and comedy, and comedy. And but comedy. like more of a comedic actor than a comedian. Okay. Uh, but that's the same thing. Yeah. You are. I know you are in Groundlings, so yes. I know you are pursuing that. Mm -hmm. What do you want to talk about first? Because I want to get into both, for okay. sure. Yeah, yeah. So what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about... Because I'm going to bet, right? I think you know that, right? Yeah. I'm going to bet with my buddy. So I need you to kind of dial me in. Monday, okay, I'm going back you. to work. Like, I've been boo. totally off of it. So okay. Monday, I'm diving back into like, you got this. Trying to get the six pack. So, okay, perfect. Do you want to talk about that first? Let's talk about holistic health first. Yeah, let's do it. That's okay, perfect. so okay. holistic nutrition. You saw like nutrition, uh, yes. you saw when you're like checking out my new computer that I had I left the Google tab of like it was oh, the what best is... it was the best thing as soon as I walk in on Steven's computer in like huge letters it wasn't even little it was just <laughs> what is holistic nutrition <laughs> and I was like oh someone's doing his research we're really thorough here yeah it's yeah still. <laughs> <laughs> it was great so yeah what do you or what does it mean to you okay you know, like how do you view it yeah well I'm training to become a holistic health coach so okay. basically what a coach does is it's essentially like you know um you have a registered dietitian that you see or you have your doctor that you'll go see mm -hmm. and your doctor's like yo Steven you got some insane blood pressure bro like you need to bring your blood pressure down sure and you're like great how do I do that and your doctor's like go see a registered dietitian I because doctors don't tend to have a lot of nutrition experience they sure. are doctors that's what they were trained to do so they'll send you to a registered dietitian sometimes sometimes they won't mm -hmm. and if you go see a registered dietitian they'll give you a meal plan and they'll be like a registered dietitian is essentially like a doctor of nutrition sure and so they'll be like okay this is your meal plan like go here you go like go execute it to bring your blood pressure down so when you get home you're like i don't know what the heck i'm doing like what the fuck like mm -hmm. essentially you're like i don't know what i'm buying from a grocery store i don't know what i should be doing i have a busy life i have a podcast i'm running like i'm doing stuff i don't have time to be cooking meals yeah so what you would do is you'd hire a holistic health coach me mm -hmm. who's been trained in nutrition and would come in and i would help you implement like a meal plan i would motivate you i would teach you um, different recipes you can do for your own life. I would help. I would take you to the grocery store. I would show you around all the healthy food aisles. I would right. break down different things for you so you would know how to implement it into your life. And essentially, I would teach you how to be like a skillful eater is mm -hmm. um, what my 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 school calls it is like skillful eating. Sure. So you know how to nourish your body properly. So that's basically what. Um, so holistic nutrition is looking at the patient or the client as a whole person, mm -hmm. um, all all areas of health, mental health, emotional health, um, physical health, what they're eating, what they're feeling, um, stress points in their life. It's just like a holistic approach to their health rather than just one, you know, area of, right. you know, in medicine, Western medicine, we tend to focus on one thing like, oh, well, you have hypertension. That's because, you know, you're just eating too much salt, not because you're stressed out at work. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Like, so it's so. kind of a, a big picture. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Big picture. Yeah. So here's here's the crazy thing to me, right? Mm -hmm. I, when I think of things that are subjects, I should say to uh, better alliterate my point, versus things. Things is kind of a yeah a, a grade level things. word. So when I think of stuff or things, yes, um, yes. 
dieting and just kind of, you know, what you should eat, right? Mm -hmm. I think that has changed so much oh since gosh, me yeah. and you were uh, in elementary school oh, yeah. versus today. Yes. The, it was all about eating your pasta. That was the biggest pyramid, bottom of the pyramid. When I, I remember, right. I, you got the sheet, and you know, which there's which, so much into that pyramid that it's just cringy. But yeah, it's yeah, so sure. bad. Yeah, it's it's a lot of lobbyists, is what that is. It's really, people lobbying to get their foods. Like so much money is in the farming industry, and so that's why when we grew up, it was all about protein. It was like you need to eat your meat. You need to have meat with every meal. You need. Right. But really, what that was is it was commercial farming that was pushing that into people's you actually don't need a lot of meat in your diet it's hmm. actually more damaging than it is good but we could get it you continue with your pasta i agree with you well Go just ahead. it was <clears throat> pasta and and carbs is like the devil now yes. in dieting and yeah. that was the big it was like you got to eat your mm -hmm. breads and your pastas mm -hmm. to get energy mm -hmm. and that's now like the well, complete opposite it's like no, it wasn't I, that yeah. long ago no i know well the it because we have social media now. We are being inundated with new information every like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. So obviously health is changing just dramatically. Hol holistic health coaching is a new field that is projected mm -hmm. to grow in the next five years. It's a new job title that they're realizing, oh, we need this piece in, in health sure. to help people. And so the same thing as we're learning so much about food, the health industry is changing drastically. We have social media at our fingertips. So much new information is coming to us. But um, carbs aren't bad. Mm -hmm. I'm not anti-carbs. You do need um, whole healthy carbs in your diet. Right. It just depends on the type of carb you're eating. That's where like it breaks. Real it. processed stuff. Yeah, like processed stuff is not good. White carbs, like white pasta, you obviously want to stay away from. Yeah. Um, whole wheat pasta, though, if you can supplement it with like a whole wheat pasta, that's great. Or you can do like quinoa pasta, like hmm. healthier carbs. If I was coaching you, which I will, because I <laughs> I will yeah, coach I you. Um, is <laughs> is that I, I I will I will teach you about the different. But there are different kinds of carbs. There's the good carbs. There's bad carbs. Just sure. like there's good fat. There's bad fat. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just learning about as being a you know educated consumer of what to discern. You know what's the good and what's the bad. Okay, so check this out. Right, I'm in a bet with my buddy yeah. for. You know, five hundred dollars and something embarrassing. And we have like two months left. Trying to get shredded for the winter. Trying to get yeah. shredded yeah. to put on a jacket. I love it. And my plan, like, I need to get. I did pretty well, like first two weeks, and then I've had two weeks where it's not been so well. So mm -hmm. it's like, and I'm going back to work on Monday. Mm -hmm. So it's time to get back on it. Yeah. Here was my plan. Okay, okay. And you just give me. I'll like let you know. Okay. My idea, right? Because mm -hmm. you can make. You can make stuff that's really healthy and you can make it taste good, but ultimately right. it's never going to taste as good as the stuff that's terrible for you mm -hmm. most of the time. Um, and, and, and a broad paint stroke. Sure. Okay. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> um, like it's never going to be pizza and ice cream. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And like you can make great stuff, but it's how many of those things can you make? True. Yeah. So it. my, right. So my idea is like, all right, I just need to grind. Mm -hmm. And I'm the guy that loves the heavy stuff. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Pete, like I said, thick crust pizza yeah, oh, and yeah. all that stuff. Love it. Cheesy bread. Right. Yeah. Who so, doesn't? right. So my idea is like, it's kind of suck. So literally my idea this Monday was going to be, I'm going to eat like half a chicken breast and... Because well, when I eat, it always weighs me down. I get tired. So like, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to try the fasting thing again. So, mm -hmm. you know, for construction life, it'll be easier for me too because I'm going to be back on a schedule going back to work. Mm -hmm. So you skip breakfast, which is part of the fasting. And then like a chicken breast and some kind of vegetable on the side. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'll season it some way without adding too much sugar or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? I'm not going to mm -hmm. just like douse it in teriyaki sauce. That's but, good. <laughs> so yeah. chicken breast mm -hmm. and some kind of, you know whatever of the day mm -hmm. vegetable okay and then something similar for dinner mm -hmm. and it's literally going to be all i'm going to eat for two months that's already flawed it's going to be unsustainable terrible see that's already but already bad. no i know this is right now this is to win the bet yeah so but I, you got to start somewhere well so here's my thing okay mm -hmm. it all comes down to your mindset with food so what my holistic health approach is let's redefine your relationship with food first so let's talk about your relationship on how you view food and what you see it as its purpose in your life I've so been, well i've been more of a hookup guy with food <laughs> so i kind of just hit it and quit it and feel terrible the next day 
I've never been more of a relationship guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the so. thing is, is that you're in a long term relationship with food because you're gonna be eating the rest yeah, of your I life. Okay. So, so Fair already enough. I'm you're saying it's gonna suck. This is terrible. So let's talk about that first because that's unsustainable. You're already berating yourself. So right. your body is created to your brain is created for pleasure. Your brain likes nice things. It doesn't mm-hmm. like feeling like trash. It doesn't like being depressed. It doesn't enjoy those things. Mm-hmm. So your body is always trying to keep you alive by making you feel good. So it's like okay sugar makes me feel good so let's crave a cookie because i'm feeling down right now sure so if you tell yourself well you can't have a cookie because you're unhealthy you fat ass and you start beating yourself down Mm -hmm. your brain's gonna get more stressed out and it's gonna be like i really want sugar because i need some kind of a pleasure response right now because i'm feeling stressed so instead what you would do is you would say okay sugar's not good for me it's actually gonna make me feel worse so what i do want is i want like a healthy smoothie instead let's get like a berry smoothie it's gonna make me feel good it will make me feel energized it's Mm -hmm. good for me it's nutritious your brain's gonna be like oh that's a pleasure response let's actually get the smoothie and it slowly over time as you rebuild those habits on how you even think about food right your brain starts to gear itself up for wanting and craving the healthy food over the starchy uh sugary processed foods right now that's all your brain knows is its pleasure response so sure you have to really rewire just even your conversation around food Mm -hmm. because your brain's listening to you and your brain is taking in everything you're saying and it's creating pathways and it's in its little brain way and it's telling you okay this is what we eat now this is what makes us feel good So it's all about really rewiring your way of thinking in relationship with food. And then from there, finding what works for you. So you have a busy life. What are some meals? So I'm concerned that you're only going to eat chicken breast (laughs) and like a vegetable. That already sounds like an unsatisfying diet because you want to feel like you're being nourished and that you're feeling like you're actually like nourishing your body with your food for sure don't want to feel like you're depriving yourself that's not a sustainable way of going forward food okay so yeah everything that you just said Mm -hmm. i have zero argument against yeah no i know know, you're 100 percent right yeah yeah, yeah. okay and your response is what do you got hookup guy what do you got for me (laughs) what do you got hookup guy let's go uh, there could be an argument though of like hey bite off what you can chew so yes yes win the bet Mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about the rest of your life do you know what I'm saying? Yes. So get shredded and then we'll figure out how to sustain it. Yeah, for sure. Versus like mm-hmm. your whole life. That can be even more daunting than just getting shredded. The th- only thing I, oh, my only word of caution with the grind mode mm-hmm. is it's like your brain's going to snap because it's like you're pushing it so hard right now and you're going to go into this hardcore grind mode. Yeah. And then once you're done, your brain is going to snap right back and it's going to be like, all right, pizza, let's go ahead and just go crazy. As and a then reward. You're going to eat terribly and then you're going to feel really bad and mm-hmm. then you're going to be like, oh my gosh, all that hard work just went out the window. So if th- it's more of like a slow and steady runs the race approach rather than the like grind mode can be very um, damaging because it because eventually you're going to you're going to break down mm-hmm. and your body is going to be like, I need something that's going to make me feel like I'm getting a reward. So that's all I have to say. But if you want to win, sure, that can work. <laughs> Starve yourself in the morning and then have like a somewhat satisfying meal. It will work, but I yeah. think we could do it better. That's all. Well, OK couple things yeah i'm gonna ask you you know if you were to make a plan we'll get into that Mm -hmm. but i just want to confirm yesterday the only thing i had in my house to eat yeah was leftover carnitas okay so just meat so pork meat right because the carnitas is pork correct so pork it was uh slow cooked it wasn't fried slow cooked in a crock pot and then broiled to make it you know crispy carnitas Mm -hmm. it's very delicious obviously Mm -hmm. there's a little bit of grease in there because it's pork And the only other thing that I had to have on the side was some sourdough bread. So I made garlic bread. Mm -hmm. So for breakfast, I had carnitas and a plate of garlic bread. Okay. So you got some carbs and you got some fat and some Um, protein. Okay. Now I'm fairly uh, aware that that is a terrible choice in nutrition. Yeah. Okay. I I mean, it's not horrible, but it's not great. Oh, I felt it. (laughs) Right. I completely felt it. Yeah. Now that I got that off my chest. I'm so proud. Thank you for confessing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> this, you for your confession. And while I was eating it, I was like, this is what, this is the meal of an unsuccessful man. <laughs> <laughs> Garlic bread. Yeah. Yeah. And a bowl of carnitas. Yeah. Okay. okay. So here's where I'm at, right? Mm-hmm. I'm kissing right underneath 200 mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. I need to get down to 175 in two months. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can't. Well, 
I'm going to be going back to work doing construction and because of my accident, right? So I'm, I can't really work out because mm-hmm. I'm right now in my head, I'm like, I just got to make sure I can do my job again because yeah. I'm coming back from injury. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I'm not going to be able to just, well, I don't know. We'll see. I kind of have to get through a week. Mm-hmm. But as far as cardio, it's, so that's why I know it's going to be super diet. Like I, it's going to be my biggest tool to win this bet is mm-hmm. dieting. Okay. What kind of plan? would you make for me? Like what would be the biggest things to make? Okay. Well, the biggest things to make is I would say focus on fruits and vegetables over anything else. So if you're going to eat something, even meat, I would say try to keep meat at a 10% ratio of your calories. And even like, like just like bland. Yeah. Just because it, okay. Especially if you're eating farm raised chicken, if you're eating meat that is from a factory raised farm, like foster farms or something like that, it's already going to have so many things in it that are not good for your body. So um, meat, there's a lot of evidence that shows that meat's not great for your body. It's not terrible. It's not bad. And I think if you eat pasture raised organic meat, that's really, it it has a lot of benefits for you. Mm -hmm. But I would say for you, if you're eating a lot of farm raised meat, try to focus more so on fruits and vegetables first, primarily in your diet, keep the meat at a 10%. And then um, for breakfast, I would tell you to really hone in on something that's protein heavy, that's going to sustain you because you do need something in your body to keep your blood sugar stable throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Also try to focus on inflammation um, reduction because a lot of the times people think that they're gaining weight when really they're just gaining inflammation. Mm -hmm. And like people's stomachs, you notice a lot of people have like, you know, poochy stomachs nowadays, for lack of a better term, like everybody's got a gut. And a lot of the times it's because your stomach's inflamed from all the sugar and the fats and all the things that you're putting in it that it it can't process. It's a lot of inflammation. And so Mm. your organs are actually inflamed. So um, sometimes if you start eating healthy and eating more fruits and vegetables, you tend to lose weight quicker because it's actually inflammation being shed from your body. Right. Um, so I would say focus on mostly fruits and vegetables, maybe like a boiled egg in the morning. Maybe if you hard boil like a dozen pasteurized eggs on, on Sunday, you can okay. have a hard boiled egg every morning for breakfast on your way out. Mm-hmm. And then like, um, some fruit, like some cut up apples from Trader Joe's and okay. then like, uh, some um, nuts. I would say like get a handful of nuts. That would be a good breakfast and a whole thing of water. Make sure you're drinking water in the morning. Mm-hmm. And that would be a good breakfast. Hard boiled egg, some nuts and um, fruit. And th- then that would be like enough to get you through till like 12 or because if you pair apples and nuts together, there's enough fat in the nuts and then there's enough um, there's enough uh, sugar. What is, well, stabilizing sugar in the apple to keep your blood sugar stable for like four to five hours. Mm-hmm. So you don't actually get super hungry. So it's a perfect breakfast to have in the morning because it'll keep you stable all the way until your lunch time. OK, so that would be like my breakfast thing for dinner. I would say do like a light lunch if you don't want to go not like try to eat just like um, a salad or something for lunch sure. can, or like a smoothie. I would go get like a juice or a smoothie. And veggie heavy. Veggie heavy, like get a juice um, from Whole Foods or uh, Trader Joe's has like pre-pressed juices. Mm-hmm. You can get one of those. And then um, for dinner, I would really like do like I would do some carbs. I'd do some quinoa, but all portion, you know, mm-hmm. healthy portions. Don't go over it, but like do some quinoa, do some like steamed vegetables and then do like a nice like pasture raised chicken or something like that. Okay. That would be my recommendation. Okay. But I'm not coaching you, so I can't give you like an official like meal plan. <laughs> well, I'm, it's hard, <laughs> yeah. right? And yeah. it's, but I mean, I got into this bet knowing it was going to be difficult. Yes. So yeah. No, it's time to sure. buckle down. It's already been a month. Yeah. And it's a three month bet, but yeah. okay. So anything else you wanted to talk about, uh, about holistic before we, cause I definitely, in the most yeah. of this chunk, I want to get into your acting. Yeah, no, Let's get into the acting. Cause it's all, it's all like encompassing. So that's fine. We'll, okay. we'll move on. Yeah. Being an actress. Yes. The big actress. A big, big old, a big old star. <laughs> I'm moving to LA to be a big star, ma. How do yeah. you, like, I don't even know how you get started in that. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. Like it's when intense. do you get an agent? How yeah. does that work? Mm-hmm. Like what? If, you, if somebody's in L.A. Yeah. and they just go, okay, I want to be an actor, like mm-hmm. what's step one? Like I have no yeah. clue how to do that. Step one, I would say, is get into class and get into like a legit class with teachers you respect who have been in things that you respect. Okay. Don't go to some teacher who's like, I can get you working in six months. Like you have to be so careful as an actor. You need to really discern because um, people want to take your money as yeah. an actor. People are like, because actors need a lot of assistance to become actors. You have to mm-hmm. hire coaches. You need all kinds of training, but, um, and people will take advantage of that. So I would say, uh, if you are an actor and you just moved to LA and you're like, I have no idea where to start. You have your, you know, a lot of people have their degree in acting, so they don't feel like they need to start in a class. Mm -hmm. 
I would say that's not true. You need to be in class because that's where you meet other people and you start collaborating with people. That's where you meet teachers who can mentor you. That is really the entrance into this career Mm -hmm. field. That's where I found a lot of my, once I got into Groundlings, I mean, I met so many amazing comedians and actors and producers and directors who were so talented and they were like, oh, like, you know, they just, you know, kind of brought me in and started collaborating and stuff like that. Like just indulge yourself in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I would say just get into class, get into class. If you were a young actor and you want to be an actor, get into a a good studio. There's so many great studios in LA. There's um, RGB. I hope I'm not messing up the name. I should have my phone, but there's, um, I don't have my, you're totally good. There's a lot of really good studios. You just have to know, um, you need to research your teacher Always check IMDb, check what people have been in, because if you're going to a teacher who has no credits on IMDb, right. that is already a red flag. Mm-hmm. Or if it's all credits that they've created themselves, another red flag. Like go to someone who's actually been in stuff, who has like some knowledge of the industry, sure. who has stuff under their belt, who can actually teach you. Because I see a lot of people go to st- teachers who have no experiences act- in acting mm-hmm. or in the industry whatsoever and they just decided to become teachers and to me that's like a witch doctor i'm like why are you going and giving them your money when they have no real life experience in right. the industry so sure yeah yeah so that's i would say step one is get into class so you get into class you start surrounding yourself with individuals that are actually <clears throat> in the industry and yes. have been a part of it mm-hmm. and then at like at what point i feel like that bridge from I want to get started to mm-hmm. landing anything. Yes. Whether it be like the tiniest little extra job, mm-hmm. like what, like anything. Yeah. Like that is such a process. It is. You it's a lot I mean? of work. Yeah. It, so, yes. yes. Right. So like yes. you get, you kind of start just hanging around people, you know, go to class, you start mm-hmm. making relationships that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and then what? So you just in this class, hopefully mm-hmm. you meet somebody that'll throw opportunities your way or like, like, like I no. said, like when do you get an agent? Like, yeah. How does that work? You got to grind. You know, you really have to be on your game of marketing yourself accordingly, getting your headshot. It's it's such a (laughs) pursuing acting professionally is a craft within itself. It's like you have to really get into your headshots and you, you know, there's not a ton of pressure at first when you're just starting out. Agents tend to have a lot more grace with you if you just have like some mediocre headshots that, you know, you had someone take of you. Um, you can get a commercial agent. That's typically the easiest way to get an agent because a lot of commercial agents accept self submissions. Mm -hmm. So you can submit whatever headshots you have of yourself. Um, and that's how I landed my first commercial agent. I, um, just self submitted and I sent in photos I had Mm -hmm. of myself and, um, yeah, that's how I got my first commercial agent. But it's it's definitely a process. I would say um, you need to have photos. You need to have a reel. You need to have um, – mm. there's a lot of different pieces you need to have to be, like, a fully functioning actor. You need to have certain things in place. But um, getting an agent obviously doesn't really mean much. Yeah. A, an agent nowadays doesn't mean much. Like, some are great. Some aren't great. And really what it comes down to is producing your own work as an actor nowadays. Like, you need to be a self – um, self tapes even if you're not hmm. auditioning do self tapes regularly really? um, have like a self tape setup where you can practice your art be in class practicing your art um, be around people who are doing it and um, write your own stuff if you can write mm-hmm. your own monologues for yourself I just would say like I mean that's just what it is now people on social media are doing their own stuff mm-hmm. um you have to really just know what you want for yourself, I guess, like to start really. Right. That, mm-hmm. that, especially that first time you reach out to, I mean, anybody in the industry, yeah. in the, anybody in the industry, but like, especially to an agent of like, here I am, this is what I have to offer as mm-hmm. an actress, an actor, a person. Yeah. Is that like super vulnerable? Of course. Yeah, of course it is. It's always vulnerable, but also there's a level of like, you have to see yourself as an equal, like as an actor, Mm -hmm. because actors tend to see themselves like, oh, look, I'm just an actor. It's like, no, you're not just an actor. You're an actor. Like you are offering something to this industry. Mm -hmm. So when you go in, you're like, I am an independent contractor. This is what I can add to your agency. This Mm -hmm. is what I can add to the film. This is what I can bring to a character. Um, And really just see yourself as your own business, because I think actors look at agents and casting directors as like gatekeepers and they're like oh they're better than me and yes they are they can help you get certain opportunities but I think as an actor you need to see yourself Mm -hmm. as an independent contractor you are offering something you believe in yourself you believe in the work you have to offer right 
Um, so yeah, that's kind of I ju- like it is very vulnerable. It's very intimidating, mm-hmm. but um, you can't take it personally. The rejection because it's just part of it. Like right, so much rejection, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's why I, I have moved into holistic health because. I started feeling really bad about myself. My my confidence started kind of really starting to waver. Sure. And, I, and then obviously the pandemic hit and we were like, all, everything shut down and mm-hmm. Groundlink shut down and all of the industry was shutting down. And so I was feeling just so depressed because I had put all of my eggs into acting. Yeah. And any actor or anyone really would tell you, like, I think it's better to be well-rounded and have multiple things going for you if you're an actor sure. than just that because if you just have that there's a lot of heartache a lot of heartbreak a lot of disappointment right and um it kind of takes your eye off of the art so if you can be a well-rounded person you can bring that back into your art and really isn't yeah delve into that and isn't that one of the not i guess the downsides i mean there's upsides and downsides to everything but yeah you know in in a creative outlet like that right where Mm -hmm. you it's so much of your identity yes yeah trying to get into that Mm -hmm. and uh, you try to do your best to be as genuine as possible, to be as professional as possible, and you're doing so much to sell. Not only like, hey, I can offer you this these services, mm-hmm. you know, as an actress or an actor, but also, I mean, ultimately, it, like I said, it's so wrapped up in kind of how you identify with yourself, mm-hmm. and then you're just constantly getting rejected. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's yep. Devastating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yes. That's 100. percent That is the actor's like burden to carry. And that's why, like, I started doing coaching because I was like, I just need to not think about myself so much sometimes. Like, as an actor, you're always thinking about yourself. You're thinking about your branding. You're thinking about, well, how are casting directors seeing me? It's very um, Mm you-centric. And it it can really collapse in on you sometimes when you're not booking. When you're, like, even, I mean, when I don't book stuff, sometimes I get so sad. I'm just like, God like another like it's just devastating and then it's even worse when family members are like oh are we gonna be seeing you in anything anytime soon because it's like no you probably won't because it's not my my control like if i could pull a commercial out of thin air and give it to me like obviously i would but you can't yeah so um i i needed something to pour into other people and that's why like i'm i'm doing coaching because it keeps me centered and it keeps me more Mm -hmm. feeling like okay i'm at least i'm helping people it doesn't make me feel so um, down on myself because when you get down as an actor, you get really down and any art form, even your podcast, I'm sure, you know, like For sure. when you are pursuing an art of some sort or a create creative business, mm-hmm. when it doesn't work, um, cause it won't at all times, it's life. Yeah. When it doesn't work, it really can hurt like a thousand times more than, you know, if it's just some job, you know, for sure. And that's kind of something I definitely want to get into. Cause mm-hmm. I know me and you are, mm-hmm. For even you and I. Yeah. Check that out. <laughs> wow, well, proper English. I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thrilled to be here. Uh, <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> I know, and yeah. and you and I have, see, I already learned. And yeah. you and I have uh, talked about this before mm-hmm. uh, off the show, but like, as an adult, mm-hmm. right, um, there's different, I've learned. So people go, oh, you just need to be productive and you need to keep moving forward. And that's all true. But that's such a broad pain stroke. Right. So you have these different avenues of your life Mm -hmm. that could be productive, but they're also just different, you know, chunks of your life. Right. So the question and kind of the topic that I want to get into is you have to balance. Right. You're always trying to put, quote, push forward and, you know, be productive. And. You have a creative side, which some people, you know, they're maybe not be very creative, you know, they just work a construction job or yeah. what, whatever the job is. It's yeah. kind of just straightforward. Mm-hmm. They go home, they watch TV, you know, they just kind of consume somebody else's creative content. Yeah. And that's okay. Some people are happy with that. For yeah. sure. It's just, yeah, they don't live too creative of a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. When, like you said, there's nothing wrong with that. They're just yeah. not as creative. Yeah. Um, and then, but you got individuals like you and I, mm-hmm. right? Or you want to, you know, you're doing comedy and, and mm-hmm. uh, improv and you're doing acting and you do, you know, holistic health. Mm-hmm. So you have this creative avenue that's, uh, you're trying to push forward in, which is so unique to everybody because mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's kind of the creative arts deal. Yeah. So it's very unique to each and everybody. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's very hard to, a lot of the times have on paper productivity yes. markers yeah. you know what I mean? you know what i'm saying yeah. so you have that avenue which you kind of have to be in a specific headspace to mm-hmm. be productive creatively creatively mm-hmm. and then you have you know like you and i where you just have another day job just to get paid and yes. pay bills yep. which is probably more straightforward than your creative avenue mm-hmm. and then you have 
you know, the health and the fitness and everything mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And then you have a social life if you want that, right? Yes, you are yeah. obviously married. You have a relationship to tend to. Mm-hmm. I don't. I just kind of <laughs> hang from the ceiling like a bat and just kind of, you know, heal that way. But uh, oh, so but you get what I'm saying? Yes, so yeah. there's a balance in life mm-hmm. where it's not just, oh, push forward and productivity yeah. and everything like that. Because I've noticed I'll go, I'll just be on point with mm-hmm. my creative outlets, whether it be this podcast or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm posting on Instagram about the show and numbers are up because I'm posting a lot and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then there's times where I'm like in the best shape of my life, but I'm not even doing the podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's always, and it's so hard to interlock like the two. It's a tug of war. Yeah. It's a tug of war. And they're so, they take, uh, they take so much out of you to, to push forward in those avenues. Mm-hmm. And yet they require something totally different. Yeah. So yeah. it's hard to, balance all of that and change gears Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yes have you noticed i mean you'll see some people they're like oh uh like a lot of people i've met where it's either they're doing really well with their weight but then they're smoking or they stop smoking and then they get fat again one or the other right they they can kill it at one or the other Mm -hmm. so what do you think about that like what's the best way for you or just kind of how have you been dealing with that that kind of balance of life Yes. Yeah. I feel like well, what I've done, I've really focused in on, I mean, I've had a very unique path that's not the war beaten path of I went to college. I got my four year degree. I, mm-hmm. It's like I raised myself. Essentially, I have always been working a day. I've always had to work since I was 13. I've had to, you know, have a job, a day job, some sort of stability to support myself. Sure. And then um, I got married. And so I think uh, my approach to acting is probably unique um, Mm -hmm. compared to other actors. Um, But to maintain that balance, I've really had to check in with myself frequently and be like, what do I want for myself? Like, what is the life I want for me? Right. Because I think people get too caught up in other people's perceptions of what they think people want for them. If that makes sense. Like, you know, you think, oh, well, everyone wants me to be a construction worker, so I'm just going to be a construction worker. Mm -hmm. And really that can be much harder for you emotionally to do than Mm -hmm. if you are pursuing what you actually want to be doing. Um, I feel like my life has been freed up in a lot of ways because I have simplified it so much. I've really distilled what I focus on. I I focus on my marriage. I focus on health, which is very life-giving for me. Acting is what I've always wanted to do. So I've really put all my attention into that. My day job is a job that I enjoy. Like I've, I I really worked hard to find a job that works with me. My boss, I love her so much. She's literally an angel and she supports me in what I'm doing. So, and I work really hard for her. Mm-hmm. So I've I've had to really, though, um, go through a lot of trial and error. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I was like job transitioning like a crazy person last year. I had like five different jobs and right. I was like going through so many job, job transitions. But it was because I was getting anxiety attacks at certain jobs mm-hmm. um, that were like hardcore like office jobs. I would get panic attacks as soon as I went in and I knew my body was telling me something was off. Mm-hmm. So I listened to that. I think a lot of people will just push themselves and be like oh you're just having an anxiety attack keep keep going to work right but to me that that was a sign that my body was like this isn't the right place for you you need to find somewhere that you don't feel this way so sure i went to peltier my job now um literally just by going down to south pasadena with my resume because i went somewhere that felt peaceful to me because i was so tired of feeling anxiety Mm -hmm. so i went to south pass because it was a very calm area and i was like i feel very at peace here so i'm just going to go give everyone my resume and I went into um, this interior design studio and I gave them my resume and they weren't hiring at the time. But anyways, they ended up bringing me on the team. And then when COVID hit, um, they brought me on full time and I ended up becoming like their purchasing manager. And now I get to work fully from home. But um, nice. I really think it was because I I've really listened to myself and I've really pushed out anything that makes me feel icky or not good Mm -hmm. um so now i feel like it's not easy juggling everything it's not by any stretch of the imagination but i do feel like um just ridding myself of things that take my energy negatively yeah has helped me pursue what i actually want to be doing i just hit your mic sorry you're totally good um like so really just saying no to any excess drama people who make me feel um like they're taking from me Mm -hmm. uh anything that's not helping me Uh, and I feel bad saying that because it sounds so selfish but it's like I've had to do that for myself I've said no to a lot of things I don't you know Chris and I have said no to having kids we've said Mm -hmm. no to a lot of different things that people would probably do Mm -hmm. because I'm so committed to pursuing what I'm doing um and so 
I guess I, I'm just trying to say, like, I would say to anyone who's trying to do multiple avenues and they're a well, they're, you know, a multifaceted person and you're trying to do a creative and you have a day job and you have a family that you need to tend to just cut out anything that makes you feel not good. Like anything that is making you feel depressed or anxious, you need to, you, that is what's going to keep you from actually doing what you want to do. Right. Yeah, no. And I, I definitely want to touch on that. It's a good yeah. topic where in the sense of like, uh, I mean, well, one thing I've learned from this podcast and having to put myself out there is that you're never mm -hmm. going to make everybody happy. No, no. Yeah. You know, we live in a kind of weird society where obviously selfishness can be toxic, mm -hmm. but it can also be uh, re rewarding, I guess, yes. but uh, useful. Yeah. Because, in, I mean, you know that, like there's people and you go well why are you going to cut that person out right when they need you the most mm -hmm. and you go okay well i need to work on me a little bit yes i mean not to get political it's like why are we giving money to everybody around the world like mm -hmm. when america's on fire do you know what i mean like stuff like that yeah. mm -hmm. but it is it's so yeah like you have to focus on yourself mm -hmm. cuz you can't give to others if you have nothing to give yes. from yourself yes yeah you know what i mean so what do you think was the biggest thing you learned after you kind of took those steps, right? Mm -hmm. Because here you are, you kind of you said, hey, okay, hey, I'm not giving up on giving to the world. And, you yeah. you know, you didn't cut everybody out. But no. you just kind of took a second to like, all right, I'm going to just focus inward and kind of work on myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your view on yourself since doing that, mm -hmm. well, you know, what has it been, a year, six months since you kind of started that process? Yeah, it's been like two years. Two years? Yeah. Okay. So over the last two years, uh, what's the biggest thing you're proud of? I think the biggest thing I'm proud of is I just feel really good about everything I'm doing. Like I feel mm -hmm. really confident and I don't care if people, I, cause that's an accomplishment for me because I, my whole life have been a people pleaser. I've always wanted mm -hmm. to fit into people's perceptions of me. I've always wanted everyone to like me. I've always needed that from people. Mm -hmm. And the last couple of years I've really been like, you don't need that Ivory. Like you have everything you need. I always felt like I wasn't good enough. Like I always felt like I wasn't cause you know, I had, I, obviously I will just go really briefly I had like a very poor family and I grew up in a very wealthy area I grew up in Huntington Beach so I, all these girls I went to school with they all had like money and parents that bought them everything and I never had that so I always felt very like inferior to everyone around me mm -hmm. and um I think once and I always channeled my energy into just working I was like well you just have to work harder than everybody sure and then once I um graduated and did a lot of healing and like, you know, saw a therapist and got married and stuff. I realized like, oh, you actually have everything you need and you don't have to like keep that over your head. Like you have it all at your disposal. Like it's, it's all okay. And I think the thing I'm most proud of is I really do feel very good now. Uh, even if people don't understand, oh, why are you doing acting? That's so strange. I'm confident enough in myself to be mm -hmm. like, well, I'm, I love this and this is my art. Like this is what I do and I'm very mm -hmm. proud of it. And, um, I just being able to really inhabit myself and not be apologetic to everyone around me and not feel like I need to shrink myself to mm -hmm. fit around everyone else. Cause I used to do that a lot. I would really try to keep myself small to make other people comfortable. Sure. And once I started breaking out of that, it rattled some cages Some people stopped being my friend, not in a toxic way. We, no, there was no blowouts or no, no drama at all. It was just, I think me being myself made them uncomfortable and they were mm. like, Oh, she's loud or, Oh, she's actually very opinionated or whatever. And, um, mm. but I'm happy because I'm like, I'm being me and it sounds so cheesy. I'm being me, but it's, no. it's also, it's also hard to do that. I think yeah. nowadays we are so inundated with other people's standards. I mean, everyone's mm -hmm. trying to look like the Kardashians nowadays. Right. It's like, why are we trying to do that? When you look like you, like maybe just try to inhabit yourself well, like try to look like the best version of yourself yeah. rather than someone else's version of you. Um, I know we've talked about that before, like perception and just how we yeah. feel like we have to obey other people's perceptions. And it's mm -hmm. like, no, you don't like that's actually you're lying to yourself. Yeah. And I really think like we think, oh, well, we're doing other people a favor by being quiet and fitting into this perception they've built of us. But it's like you're actually harming yourself in the end. Right. So the thing I'm most proud of is just being be just inhabiting me like i'm i'm i've always wanted to do holistic health so i'm doing it i've always wanted to do acting so i'm doing it mm -hmm. those are the two things i've only ever really wanted for myself sure 
And so I'm lucky that it's only two things. I think if I had more stuff, it would be very overwhelming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, just I have had to really rid myself of, I deleted my old Instagram that was connected mm-hmm. to a lot of people that, you know, used to know me. And I just, I was like, I don't want those. I don't want that connection. I wish everyone the best. I don't have any issues with anybody, but I just, I need to really feel freed up in my own life. For sure. So I'm proud of that. <laughs> If that answers the question. Yeah, I know. It's, it sounds, first of all, I think that's really cool. Thanks. Because I also used to get, you know, obviously in my own, in my own way, but, uh, would get so caught up with, uh, what am I trying to say? You get so caught up in discovering, Mm. uh, the, what is being viewed from the lens of others. So you're trying to figure that out. How do I, how are people perceiving me? Mm -hmm. So you get so caught up in discovering what people are seeing Mm -hmm. and then you get so caught up in adjusting to make it how they think you should view in their lens Yes. Yes. versus just looking at myself through my lens Mm -hmm. and making sure that that looks good to me. Social media exploits that because you have everyone following you. You have this perception management tool at your fingertips that this is how I want everyone to perceive me. And it's like, that's actually not realistic because you're a human being. You're multifaceted. You have many different parts of you. Mm -hmm. There is no one way of seeing you. And if someone's viewing you one way and they don't want to see you in any other light, that's Mm -hmm. their problem. It's not your problem. Like that's not your weight to have to carry, you know? I feel like our generation just all of a sudden was like okay well you're gonna also need to be your own publicist yes and that's priority number one so you're just constantly walking around versus instead of just being the celebrity Mm -hmm. now you're walking around as that celebrity's publicist exactly yeah right you are the celebrity and the publicist (laughs) right like like, so you're constantly just like oh is this okay like is my publicist gonna like this and so Mm -hmm. you're just constantly thinking like that Mm -hmm. versus just being the celebrity that everybody should be absolutely do you know what i mean yeah okay so the last two years here you are now. You're shining mm-hmm. bright. Shining like a diamond. You're shining so bright, <laughs> Ivory. Um, oh, my God. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> That's amazing. Right. Um, yeah. Well, okay. I knew, and then I want to get back to your acting, yeah. but I knew that you were going through this, right? Kind mm-hmm. of, you know, dealing with shit and kind of dealing with, you know, perception and stuff mm-hmm. like that and kind of, and it's... You're already, I mean, for people that aren't even kind of putting themselves out there vulnerably, mm-hmm. they're just on that level of just, I'm just living my life, mm-hmm. right? Which is at an all-time high, that vulnerable, because yes. everything is social media and blah, blah, blah. Everyone's looking at your life, yeah. But like we already talked about, it's even more intense. It's cranked up because you're also doing acting. Yes. And you're also doing all these avenues which are vulnerable in and of themselves. Exactly, yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so now here you are. I'm just... Glad to hear that you're thriving. That's all I wanted to say. I appreciate it. There's no question. I just want to say. No, yeah. But I do. I want like to actors. It's hard because it's like you are putting yourself out there. It's very vulnerable. No Mm -hmm. matter what you do, there's no escape from that because you're either putting yourself out there to casting directors and you're giving them this work you've done Mm -hmm. or you're putting yourself out there on social media and you're presenting work. Right. And like the first time I posted my first comedy video, I was so nervous because mm-hmm. i was like people aren't gonna get it and i like collapsed in on myself because i was like no one's gonna understand my humor <laughs> and i realized like how silly that is because it's like a it's social media b it's like my friends and family that follow me no one cares and like c <laughs> i'm like it's like obviously i was just being so neurotic but it's like i i feel that for anybody who's doing creative business who's an entrepreneur who yeah. is um a creative you are putting yourself out there you are always risking people not understanding you mm-hmm. and then you have the f- the freaking stress of marketing yourself nowadays i mean it's unrealistic honestly the st- i even in acting i think sometimes the pressure that they put on actors to mm-hmm. have their marketing and everything needs to be perfect and you have to have your website and you have these headshots and you need to know your type and you need to be casting directly to that it's right. i genuinely don't think it's sustainable and every single casting director not every single one but we'll hammer that into you they'll be like you need to know your type you need to be hitting it you need to really be feeding that type Mm -hmm. and my thing is it's like i'm just i'm like i don't think that's sustainable anymore like i think moving forward like millennials we are creating our own job titles yeah gen z has created their own job titles new jobs are coming out i think moving forward even in the industry of acting it's going to look very different actors Mm -hmm. need to hone into their unique skills and into what sets them apart right rather than what makes them marketable because i think that the marketing thing is going to burn itself out eventually because it's all construed into this one way of thinking Mm -hmm. and i feel like our generation goes against that it's always gone against the one way of thinking and more into creating Mm -hmm. your own your own like thing 
if that makes sense so you're saying you're going to step away from marketing mm -hmm. like a hardcore marketing and it's going to be more into what makes you unique yes yeah okay yeah like more into being yourself and um yeah i i just think the better you can know yourself as a creative person entrepreneur anyone who owns their own business or is an actor or whatever um a musician mm -hmm. the more you can know yourself personally yeah. the better you can present yourself in right. the public eye because um i think if you yeah yeah well wouldn't you call that marketing yes you would call that marketing but it's almost like reverse engineering the marketing dynamic if that makes sense like okay because marketing now it's like you need to be this final product and put it out there and it needs to be like one thing okay but if you're getting to know yourself personally and you get to know all your different multifaceted ways mm -hmm. you can learn how to bottle all that up and put it into a unique package that is different than what everyone else is putting out like the you i know. see what you're saying so instead yeah. of hey just focus on marketing 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 mm-hmm spend some time and some and burn some calories on yeah. focusing on what you actually have to offer that is unique mm -hmm. in yourself yes. and market that yes yeah exactly. okay i'm picking up what you're putting together. yeah i mean unfortunately like if you're a business and you are a small business owner you are a podcaster you are mm -hmm. a musician you are an actor marketing is inevitable you yeah. do need to market yourself yeah so i don't want to just like totally be like you know more marketing like you have to it's mm -hmm. part of your job but um yeah. i think knowing what your what final product you're putting out is probably better and i guess yeah yeah sure. I, it's just it's better for everybody i think okay your first acting job <laughs> tell me the story oh my gosh let me have it what was my first acting let job? me have it oh my goodness i don't even know if i remember <laughs> oh okay well what do you mean because like i have my first my first ever acting job which was when i was little or i have like my first ever like big hollywood acting job first of all i love people that go i don't even know if i can remember let me tell you the story because i remember everything <laughs> it's, gr <laughs> it's written to my skin i actually have it right here do you want to see the story well, that's like ingrained okay so the first hollywood job what's the other one the well, one? first <laughs> well okay my <laughs> my uncle owned a production company let me hear he it. still owns a production company and so when we were little he would have us and me and my cousins when we were little he would have us in like some of his commercials mm -hmm. um and so the first ever commercial i was in was actually for uh charles le schwab tires okay and it was an organ and um <laughs> we were just like little the car breaks down in the mountains and like there's like little girls playing in the background and that was like me and my cousin and we were like playing with this dog how old were you i was like gosh i was like 10 okay so that was like my first commercial experience and then i had been in a few other productions my uncle did um just like small stuff uh -huh. and then um i was in a performing arts program and then i did a lot of like plays and stuff in high school okay and then, and then my first like actual acting job i landed myself uh this here in Hollywood la one. yeah here in la was uh being a featured extra <laughs> yes let me let me hear that <laughs> yeah in um the netflix show hollywood which was a big accomplishment for me because yeah. everyone's like oh well, you're just an extra but it's like well it's still a big deal because you're still on set it's this multi-million dollar yep. set and you're around i got to see um uh so many i mean i got to see all the actors i was there with them all night and they were so wonderful it was a really good crew of people um mm -hmm. and i was in hair and makeup and you know i was supposed to work for three days that week but i ended up only working one day because i couldn't do it all three here's what's interesting yeah so you go yeah i was actually on a set and then the first thing you go to this oh. is just what i'm hearing is <laughs> you know a lot of people don't think that's a big deal so you've already caught either a cotton yeah. flack or you perceive that you're catching flack for people like that's not a big deal you're just extra yeah so you immediately going go yeah. into like immediately underselling myself <laughs> immediately underselling yeah. yourself but then also yeah. like no really like please let me explain it to you like i think it's a big deal well, versus it was, just yeah, it was saying cool. yeah i was actually an extra on the show and i had a really good time i learned a lot and this mm -hmm. is what it was about yeah right yeah i know i'm instantly i and i have a terrible habit of underselling myself i do I, too i need to not do that because i know it's a bad habit but yes you're right steven i was on the show and it was amazing and i'm very proud of that accomplishment when you <laughs> when you got the call yeah so your agent calls you is that the way it works no i actually got it through central casting which is the extra okay. it's it's like it's um where you go through because you have to get your sag after card as an actor and mm -hmm. there's different ways you can get your sag after card one of them is being an extra if you do like three days on set and you like get featured in some of them you can get your um your sag card okay um so yeah that was i was just trying to get my sag after card 
I think I remember you when this happened, we were talking about it and mm-hmm. you said it was like a 15 hour day for you. It was 18 hours. It was crazy. It was, a, I mean, once I got out of hair and makeup and costume and everything, and then we had to wait in line to give our costumes back. It was like 4 a.m. by the time I got off. So it was like 4 30 mm-hmm. and I got home literally at five and Chris was leaving for work when I got home. Yeah. <laughs> he was like up and getting ready to go because he was still working like a crazy job at the time. Mm-hmm. And I was just getting home and I was like just getting into bed. And they needed me to do that for like four, three or four days. But I couldn't because I was still doing a day job too that mm-hmm. I had to do. So I was I, I couldn't do all three days. But you yeah, did it. I did do it. And it was cool. There's a lot of people that have never been on a Netflix set. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty amazing. It was it. amazing. I actually cried once I got onto set because it was beautiful. It was an Oscar. It was an Oscar night. It was a 1940s Oscar night. And so we were all in these very authentic costumes down to like our gar- our undergarments. I mean, they put us in like everything was authentic. Hmm. And um, it was this big, beautiful set. There was like a red carpet and people were in bleachers like cheering on like the celebrities. I got to be one of the starlets that like walked out onto the red carpet and like was like waving at everyone. And um, there was like these big, huge Oscars and it was just, it it felt like I was at the Oscars in the 1940s. It was very, very cool, very trippy. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I got to see them filming everything and, you know, it was, it was amazing. And um, yeah, it was very emotional for me because I was like, wow, I can't believe I'm finally here. Like, even though I wasn't one of the featured people, but I was like, I get to be a part of this and that enough, that alone was enough for me. I was like, this is just incredible to even experience this and be on a set with so many amazing amazing actors and for um what's like oh i got to watch francis i'm forgetting her name but she's this old she's amazing um and i got to watch her last night she was rapping that night and i got to watch her performance and mm-hmm. it was really beautiful and i was just like wow i can't believe i'm actually here like it was cool it was like a very exciting moment <laughs> for sure yeah i would yeah so much so much validation i would imagine too yes yeah so okay We've definitely talked enough about uh, the struggles and the mm-hmm, balance mm-hmm, of life and being mm-hmm. creative and blah, blah, blah. And we've talked about some of the frustrating aspects of that. And we just talked about a great night you had of getting on the set, right? Mm-hmm. I know it's just being an extra. No, but you no. know what? It was a big deal. Yeah. It was a big deal. Mm-hmm. What do you think has been the most rewarding thing since you've really buckled down and tried to pursue act- being an actress? You know, what's like oh. been the highlight right there? Definitely for me so far, it's been groundlings, like getting to train right now. I'm in um, Karen Mariyama's class and she's, I grew up watching Karen on Mm -hmm. um, Whose Line Is It Anyways? Sure. And I always thought she was so cool because she would always wear like these like green shirts. Mm -hmm. And when I was little, I would be like, that girl's so cool. (laughs) And I I just don't know why her episodes would always come on. She wasn't on a ton of them, but her episodes, we would watch the reruns and they always came on when I was little. And Mm -hmm. so she was like kind of like a fundamental piece for me in that show. Um, and so now I'm like in her class at Groundlings Yeah. and she's, I love her so much. She's like by far one of the best teachers I've had. Um, Mm -hmm. and she just is amazing and she pushes me really hard in every class. She's so like, like she's amazing and she, um, she pushes me to do things that I don't think I'm capable of doing. And sure. she's, she's definitely hard. She's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> like she mm-hmm. like, def- she knows she's like, I know I yell, I know I yell, but it's cause I care. <laughs> and she, but she's amazing. And, um, she's just really pushed me to do things that I didn't think I was going to be able to do in my craft of improvising. Sure. And, um, it's just getting to be in groundlings even. And like, once the school opens back up, like getting to be in the halls, it's yeah. like, well, I got to be at the school, before it shut down for covid and just being in the halls and seeing like photos of people that i respect so much like melissa mccarthy and Kristen wig a lot of history maya there. rudolph yeah and seeing them when they were young in their in their um programs like they have the photos up of them doing like characters mm-hmm. it's a really surreal feeling and i just i'm 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 just like honored i get to be there i'm just like this is a, a very cool thing that i get to do mm-hmm. and i'm proud that i get to t- train with these teachers who are just really amazing teachers they're sure. just really good people who are fucking good at their craft like they're just yeah. amazing like honestly like this is like the best way i can put it i'm just like they're insane like isn't that so satisfying when you see and it can be anything but mm-hmm. just somebody that is so well trained and you can just tell like that guy has put in more than ten thousand hours yes at that craft yes because it's such a beautiful thing and to watch. you see it you can see it when they're yeah. on t- stage and they're doing stuff i'm like oh 
oh it's so subtle like right. they'll like they do long form improv the t- some of the teachers and i've seen them and they're like doing stuff they're like bringing things back from like four scenes ago that they improvised mm-hmm. and they're like bringing it back into a recent scene and i'm like dude i don't know how you guys are doing that like it's it's incredible sure. it's it just like probably when you watch that comedian and you were like dude he's like a master of words like yeah yeah no for sure it's mm-hmm. i mean you just tell like that guy more than 10,000 hours oh yeah without a sure. doubt like there's yeah. no there's just no other way to get to no. get it that dialed yeah um okay 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 is there anything else you wanted to bring up before we wrap this show because i've kind of kept it going kept it yeah, going no, 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 i get that um and i know a lot of individuals have kind of their own thought of the conversation mm-hmm. before, you know what i mean before yeah. we start so is there anything else you wanted to touch on i do want to talk about groundlings because i know some people might be interested in auditioning for groundlings sure. so i would just say if you do audition don't be nervous about the audition because the audition is actually the easiest part mm-hmm. um so auditioning really? is not the hard part okay. it's staying in the schools okay. <laughs> staying in the programs the hard part <laughs> It's really? definitely not even that. No, staying in the classes isn't even bad. It's I think once you get into writing lab and then you um, are trying to get into Sunday company, that's when it gets more competitive. Mm-hmm. But um, don't be nervous about the audition. Um, that's like my main thing. If anyone is interested in acting and they're like, well, what do, where do I start? I want to do improv and comedy. Definitely Groundlings or um, UCB is a good school, too, in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, yeah, the audition, they're mainly, they're mainly just looking for eye contact. I remember that was like a big thing my teacher kept telling me because I had taken a couple of like, um, just like small classes before I auditioned in and she was like, they just want to see that you can make eye contact with everyone. Like it's a confidence move. Yeah. Conf- for sure. It's a confidence it move. It is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. So, um, that would be my main thing. Just don't be nervous. If you did audition into the school, it's a very fun audition process. You basically just do improv exercises. So I love those subtleties of like. You know, because it, it makes sense. It's like you're going to come in here and audition to be in this class and you can't even look me in the face. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. makes a statement to be mm-hmm. like, I'm here and I'm in the room. Mm-hmm. Look, at me. look at me in the eye. Yeah. Look at me in the eye, Potter. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the lights leave your eyes. Yeah. You're such a nerd. Sorry. <laughs> you're totally I just good. love Voldemort so much. Um, <laughs> well, what do you think yeah. the biggest... Sorry. No, what no, do you, no, good. What do you think the biggest thing... You know, this is kind of a simple question, but mm-hmm. uh, one of the biggest things that you've learned from being at Groundlings, you know? Because oh you've gosh. been going for, you know, obviously Two with COVID, years, but yeah, off and on and for, half, yeah. for quite some time. You know, mm. when you think about it, mm. what's kind of the big takeaway? Specificity, for sure, because they drill that into you. There, well, You need to be specific with your mm. scenes and your characters and every choice you make is a specific choice um, when you're mm. improvising. But, it, okay, there's so much about improv that I can get into that's so meta just right. into my own life that I've learned from Groundlings and doing improv and it's... Mm-hmm definitely formed me into being a better person Mm -hmm. um but one of the big things definitely is like yes anding of course that's like the basic of any improv is you have to yes and your scene partner um Hmm. but like learning to just be collaborative and specific with they drill that so heavily into you that it really does transfer into life yeah because you start realizing like the more specific i am in my own life even the better results i'll have than being very general specific and and deliberate you know what i mean like like make it make each minute on purpose exactly like everything's intentional that's like obviously not all the time but when it comes to like the big things like what you want for yourself i would say this to anybody who's like working themselves out of like a rut you know what i mean or like Mm -hmm. because you know i came from a very broken childhood i did not have life given to me sure and so i would just say to anybody who's coming from that kind of a background like you need to be specific with what you want for yourself you right. don't have the luxury of getting caught up in things that other people can like mm-hmm. um partying and drinking and whatever like that's not a luxury you can afford like yeah. you need to stay focused and you need to really w- want what you want and be specific about it mm-hmm. um that would be i think my biggest thing if anyone's trying to get themselves Right. Because it's like, my thing is like, if I can be pursuing acting, anyone can. Because I sure. did not have, it's not like I had parents that were like in the industry or anything. Right. <laughs> like, so, yeah. Well, one thing that I learned from a recent podcast guest, mm-hmm. actually, is, I mean, he was talking about financials, but uh, action taken. Yeah. Right? So there's so many times where, and I, you know, everybody gets caught up in this. You're like, oh, well, mm-hmm. I'm reading, po- you know, I'm listening to podcasts, and I'm reading books, and I'm Googling this, and I'm trying mm-hmm. to read up on this. It's like, okay, but well, what action is actually being taken? Yes. You know, going back to being intentional, mm-hmm. especially for somebody that's in a rut. Mm-hmm. So you go, okay, 
this is what I want. I'm doing all the research, but what action has been taking? Am I just partying or am I just doing this? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's the action that's being taken. So you're getting the results of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of simple math if you look at it like that. Yeah, for sure. So one step at a time in the right direction. But yeah. okay. Anything mm-hmm. else? And then uh, just give yourself time. That's all I have to say. Give yourself grace, time. There, mm-hmm. If you, Rome was not built in a day. Sure. And grinding is great, but it's also not sustainable. So you need to give yourself moments of rest mm-hmm. and be holistic about it. You are a whole functioning person. Your body is important. Take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. And community is important. Take care of those around you. Take care. Just just be kind to yourself. Be kind to everyone around you, and work work hard and be prepared that it's going to take a long time. I, I think people nowadays, our culture is all about hyper speed and we're going to, we're going to just jump and we're going to make this happen really fast. And we're going to like create this and you can, um, I, I see a lot of people talking about like, you know, hyper speeding and well, sure. I'm going to help you jump to the next level. And yes, that's great. And I appreciate the enthusiasm, but also like really creating something that's sustainable it takes time and it takes a lot of subtleties and details Mm -hmm. and those things can't be rushed so yeah that's all that's i think that's it that's all i got (laughs) (laughs) okay so check this out i know you've been on before but it was Mm -hmm. before i was starting to ask these questions to finish these shows right i know i love that you're asking questions i know so standing still is Mm -hmm. the name of the show i called it that literally to try to find that balance in life you know Mm -hmm. that you know Mm -hmm. we've been talking about most of this show for me, you know, that moment of clarity, that moment of Zen kind of, or sometimes it's a memory of like, oh man, at this time I was really just in the moment. Wasn't thinking about the past or mm-hmm. what's to come. What do you think standing still means to you? Hmm. So she takes a deep breath, really just <sighs> inhaling in. <laughs> Sorry. What, what do you think? Okay. I would say standing, like what the podcast means or just like what the idea of it behind it means. That idea of it behind it. You know, what is that? What do you think that means uh, to you? Yeah. Maybe it's me. a memory that you have mm. or just kind of, yeah, that moment of Zen, right? That moment of clarity. Like, what do you think it means to you? Yeah. For me, it just means for sure being present. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love the concept of your podcast because I think what it really means is that you're interviewing people you find fascinating and mm-hmm. you're being intentional and just trying to understand them from right. like a more holistic point of view. I mean, that's why podcasts are great. It's, sure. it's not like social media where it's a two second blip. It's like you get to have a long winded conversation with someone and really hear them out. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it's definitely just being uh, present. Yeah. Um, big thing I used to struggle with was anxiety. And a lot of that was because I wasn't being present. I was literally five years in the future. I was five years in the past and yeah. I was not in my actual vicinity. And I had so much anxiety because yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. So learning to just actually be here right now with Steven yeah. doing this podcast in the moments. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very freeing feeling because I'm like, oh, I'm like everything's fine right now. Like, right. We're, we're chilling right now. And um, yeah, it's uh, that's what standing still probably means is just present intentionality, mm-hmm. connecting with people. And you're building community, really, because you're making connections with people. It's a very powerful thing. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> well, to finish the show, I was about to say, right, because, you know, I have a lot on my plate right now. Yeah, you do. But I haven't thought about it for the last hour and two minutes. Oh, good. Because we're here. Yeah. And that's what this podcast is about for me, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you're my cousin. Yes. So I see you here and there. Mm-hmm. I have seen you grow so much. And oh, I know I sound like, like an older figure my here. My dad. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I knew we were going to talk about kind of that balancing act with dealing with, uh, you know, anxiety and different things and kind of perception. I knew that was going to come up Mm because I I know me and you, you and I. We think about it a lot. It's something that goes on. Yeah, we think about it a lot. We both put ourselves out there a lot, right? Mm -hmm. With you and your comedy and your Mm -hmm. acting and everything else. Mm -hmm. With me, with this show and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just want to say thank you for coming on. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for having me. And thank you for setting a great example for me to help help me grow as well you've done a lot of work the last couple of years and it hasn't gone unnoticed i've learned Mm -hmm. a lot from your from your uh what you've learned all right yeah of course i'm happy to do it steven and we're rooting for you me and chris you know we support you we're so proud of you we just like want this to explode for you so it will and a lot of people are going to see this and learn from you as well yeah oh thank you i hope so i hope so stay strong out there babies stay strong that's all i gotta say well thank you ivory and thank you for uh thank you uh, everybody else for listening Mm -hmm. take care If you enjoyed this content, be sure to check out the Standing Still podcast both here on YouTube and wherever else you listen to podcasts.